Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the near future, and the Earth is too polluted to tolerate life. Survivors are taken to a secluded compound, and subjected to a stringent set of regulations. They are constantly supervised, and they are required to wear bracelets to be tracked. Residents are not permitted to have relationships. Every week a lottery is drawn, and an inhabitant is chosen to go to the island, the world's only pathogen-free zone. One of these residents is Lincoln Six Echo. He's been having unusual dreams recently, including one in which he sees himself on a boat. A computer informs him that he must report to the Tranquility Center for a wellness exam. After breakfast with Jordan, Lincoln visits Dr. Bernard Merrick's office. Merrick reveals that he summoned him because he had grown too close to Jordan, and is having nightmares. Lincoln starts asking questions about food and clothes, showing a desire to have more happening in his life. Merrick informs him that his mission is to repopulate Earth, and that he would like to conduct some unique tests to check his mental activity. He takes Lincoln to a lab, and inserts tiny probes through his eyes into his brain. Lincoln then goes to the labs, where he works on feeding the nutrient lines. Nevertheless, he is disrupted when a pregnant woman, Lima 1 Alpha's water breaks. Now, she will also go to the island, thanks to her baby. Lincoln, tired of being there, removes a chip from his computer, and goes to see a technician friend, James Mac McCord. Lincoln enjoys talking with Mac, because he has booze and photographs of women. Then something unexpected emerges in front of Lincoln, a moth, which he captures and places inside a matchbox. Meanwhile, Mac climbs upstairs inside the facility to repair some broken equipment, and observes the extraction of a human body from a strange-looking bag, filled with a slimy substance. The physicians examine him, and after determining that he is a good product, they burn a mark on his wrist, put on a bracelet, and transport him to the facility. Behind this lab is a section with hundreds of corpses in various stages of growth, in bags connected to the tubes Lincoln works with. Later that night, Lincoln drinks with Jordan, and wonders if she's sick because he noticed Merrick looking through her file. He suspects something is awry, but she simply advises him to focus on the good, as they depart to watch the lottery. The winner is Jordan, which disappoints Lincoln, because she will no longer be around. He decides to explore after yet another night of nightmares. He descends to the technician levels, and frees the moth adjacent to the ventilation shaft, so he may follow it out. He climbs some stairs and pushes up a panel, allowing him to reach a previously unseen portion of the institution. After taking and putting on scrubs, he enters a room, and finds a window through which he can see Lima and her newborn child. The physicians place the infant in a cot, tying the woman up and injecting her with poisons that kill her. The infant is given to a couple who are waiting in another room, and the wife resembles Lima. Lincoln, shocked and disgusted, feels Lima's body to confirm her death, then slips into the reception area, where he notices two men arriving to pick up Jamal Starkweather, the football star. The receptionist informs them that he is still being operated on. The treatment is being performed on Starkweather 2 Delta, who wakes up in the middle of it, to discover that he is being sliced open so that his organs can be removed. Starkweather pushes the physicians and machines away from him, and exits the room, entering the hallway where Lincoln is hidden. Security personnel enter and shoot Starkweather in the legs, causing him to fall, before dragging him back into the operating room, while he begs for mercy. Later, Merrick goes to the guards to view the security camera footage of the incident. He finds Lincoln lurking in the corridor, he can't see his face, but his wristband is clearly visible, indicating that they have a product on the loose. Guards are dispatched to find him. Lincoln rushes to Jordan's room, where she is getting ready for the island. He drags her away with him, as he says that Lima and Starkweather are no longer alive, and that there is no island. As the computer detects Lincoln's face on the recording, the guards chase them. Lincoln and Jordan continue to run, escaping the guards gunfire, until they reach the door leading to the lower floors. They utilize various tools to trip the guards and knock them unconscious as they flee. One of the guards knocks Lincoln to the ground, but Jordan uses a wrench to knock him out. The two climb into a shaft, and collapse into a room with hundreds of people, chained on stretchers and brainwashed by recordings about the island. When the guards arrive, Lincoln and Jordan hide behind the stretchers, before rushing to the door. They find an elevator, and take it to reach a tunnel that connects the facility with the outside world, but as soon as they cross to the middle, they discover that all the gorgeous surroundings are just an illusion, they are still on facility grounds. They enter a new structure, which houses the computer that keeps the hologram running, and pass through a door that leads to a different tunnel. This one does take them outside, and they find themselves in a desert. Meanwhile, Merrick is meeting with potential wealthy clients to sell them as product, clones of themselves for organ harvesting, surrogate childbirth, and other vital uses. But he is not entirely truthful, 
he informs the clients that the clones are kept in a vegetative condition, and will never attain consciousness. Later, Merrick meets with Albert Laron, a mercenary and former gendarmerie officer, who operates a security company with former SEALs. While Laron pledges complete confidentiality, he says that two of his items have escaped. Laron accepts the job, and dispatches his men after the fugitives. Lincoln and Jordan pause to rest at some old ruins, where they finally realize the contamination theory is a lie. When they come across a Route 39 sign, they decide to continue that route, eventually arriving at a tavern. Although communicating with the bartender is tough, they learn that Mac, Lincoln's friend is now in the restroom. Lincoln pursues him, furious at having been duped. Mac warns them that security will be looking for them, and promises to tell them everything. They take Mac's car to his house, where he explains that they are clones of the real world ones, and they are kept dumb. The memories they have of their youth are fabricated and implanted by programming, Lincoln is three years old, and Jordan is four. Merrick hides them in a secret bunker, because he doesn't want the sponsors to find out. Lincoln gets an idea, find their sponsors, tell them the truth, and put Merrick out of business. Mac agrees to assist. He looks up their identities on the internet, and discovers that they are Tom Lincoln from Los Angeles and Sarah Jordan from New York. They get into Mac's car, where he hands them some cash and a credit card, which he reports as stolen, so no one knows he's helping them. The trio arrives at a train station, where Lincoln uses the restroom, and passes the probe that Merrick had implanted in him the day before. But it's too late, since Laron and his team have been using these probes to track them down, and they now know where they are. Mac obtains train tickets for the clones, and instructs them to look for their sponsors in the information directory. Later, as Mac discovers the mercenaries in the crowd, he tries to warn Lincoln and Jordan, which prompts an agent to shoot him. Lincoln and Jordan flee the station, and seek refuge in an abandoned facility, where they find a crowbar and a nail gun to defend themselves. When one of the mercenaries discovers them, they nail him to the door and flee on the train. Meanwhile, the mercenaries are tracking Mac's credit card. They are waiting for Jordan and Lincoln at the station, but as the train arrives, the couple exits the building through the back door, they make it to Los Angeles, where they see Jordan's visage promoting perfume on a poster. As they approach a public information directory, where they attempt to contact their sponsors, surveillance cameras on the street track them around. Lincoln's number isn't mentioned, but Jordan's is, and a small child answers, stating his mother is ill, and has been admitted to the hospital. When he stares at the webcam, he believes Jordan is his mother, and Jordan is surprised at how much the child resembles her. Since they've been using the stolen credit card, authorities track them out and apprehend them before the mercenaries. Lincoln gives them his name, so they can look up his profile, allowing him to peep at the computer and learn the address of his sponsor. Meanwhile, Laron's guys attach a tracker to the police car to track them down, and remove the clones before the officers conduct a DNA test. As additional officers come and open fire on the mercenaries, they send a truck to collide with it, allowing Lincoln and Jordan to flee. As they are pursued, they flee through numerous buildings, before jumping onto a 16-wheeler truck carrying heavy machinery. When the truck reaches the highway, they begin unleashing massive chunks to halt the automobiles behind them, but a unique glider bike gets to pass through and shoots the truck, causing it to stop. When the motorcyclist gets too close, Lincoln hits him with an iron rod, then steals the vehicle and drives away with Jordan. They ride the bike through the city, avoiding several train tracks, and even breaking through the windows of a building. After getting stuck on the building's emblem, the two try to hide from the mercenaries shooting. The fire ruins the massive metal logo, causing it to collide. It lands on a neighboring building site, which is lined with safety nets, ensuring the clone's safety. While the cops come, a construction worker assists them in escaping. Returning to the facility, Merrick discovers another clone asking too many questions, and after killing him, he orders the guards to search all the clones in the Echo population. A few hours later, the doctors deliver the results of their testing to Merrick. They discover Lincoln has been retrieving his sponsor's memories by comparing his past scans to the ones taken by the probes. Since all generations, from Echo to the most recent, share the same fault, that makes them curious, Merrick instructs the doctors to destroy all of the clones. They'll distribute bulk lottery winners to make it appear as if all of the problematic clones are also moving to the island. Jordan and Lincoln take a taxi to his sponsor's house after spending the night hidden. His cloned eyes allow him to unlock the door, and inside he finds images of himself riding automobiles planes and even the boat from his dream. They are attacked by Tom, Lincoln's sponsor, but he backs off when he sees a replica of his own face. After learning what's going on, Tom removes their wristbands, and offers them new clothes, telling them about his life. 
he designs vehicles for a living and suffers from hepatitis, which is why he paid for a clone. Tom pretends to accept their request to assist them in exposing Merrick. But when he goes to his room to collect his shoes, he calls the Institute, and informs them that there are two clones in his house. When he returns, Jordan detects the deception and informs Lincoln, who instructs her to remain in the house while they leave. They steal one of Tom's cars, which Lincoln can drive because they share fingerprints, but they are attacked by the mercenaries. Tom draws a gun on him, but Lincoln doesn't care, he slams on the gas and speeds away as cars from all directions attack them. Lincoln drives into an abandoned building and tries to flee, but Tom leaps on him and points his gun at him again. Laurent approaches with his own gun, but he has no idea who to shoot. Lincoln seizes the opportunity to impersonate Tom. During an argument about who is the clone, Lincoln places the bracelet on Tom's wrist, convincing Laurent that he is the clone, and forcing him to shoot him. Following that, Lincoln promises Laurent that he will not tell anybody about the clones, and lies about Jordan's location. Laurent trusts him, and returns the actual Tom's body to the Institute. Lincoln returns to Tom's residence, where Jordan threatens him with a revolver she's discovered around the house, but immediately backs away when she learns he's not Tom. A few hours later, they receive a call from the Institute, informing them that they will be discarding all defective goods, and beginning over, and that Tom should come over to provide them with a new DNA sample. Lincoln and Jordan talk things over, and decide that while they could escape on Tom's boat, and live a regular life, they'd rather go back and help their fellow clones. They devise a strategy to enter the institution and shatter the hologram, so that everyone can see the truth. Lincoln disguises himself as Tom, and calls the Institute to request a pickup, while Jordan goes out and uses the credit card, so that the mercenaries can track her down and capture her. Jordan is escorted to an operating room at the Institute, so that her organs can be harvested for her sponsor, but she pulls out a rifle, shoots the guard, and steals the keys. She reunites with Lincoln in the hallway, where he had also knocked out his guide, and stolen a medic's robe, but they soon part ways when they observe the clones being hauled away. Jordan chooses to follow them, as Lincoln grabs the keys and heads out to fire down the hologram. Meanwhile, Laurent is speaking with Merrick, and showing him how he was branded during his father's revolt. He despises the thought of humans being treated as less than human, and he believes Merrick regards himself as a deity. Doctors are performing an autopsy on a man they believe is Lincoln, but discover it is actually Tom, because the band is on the incorrect wrist, thus, the security alarm is activated, and the guards begin searching for Lincoln. Laurent, on the other hand, has changed his mind, so he goes in search of Jordan, and the two of them pursue the clones being sent out, threatening the guards until the clones are liberated. Lincoln makes it to the holographic room, but he is unable to access the computer, because it is shielded by bulletproof glass, so he attempts to overload the machine with steam pressure instead. Merrick shoots him as he takes down the switches, but Lincoln retaliates by pulling a chain from the floor around Merrick's ankles, giving him an opening. Merrick leaps on him as he tries to flee, and they engage in a fist fight, which is cut short by the machine exploding. Lincoln attempts to flee once more, but Merrick stops him with his revolver, which he lays down in order to choke Lincoln with his own hands. This turns out to be a mistake, since Lincoln uses the chance to steal the gun, and shoot Merrick. While the structure continues to collapse, the two of them tumble from the railing. Lincoln saves himself by holding on to a wire, but Merrick doesn't survive. All of the clones in the facility witness the hologram fall, and rush outside, where they experience the real world for the first time. Jordan and Lincoln kiss, and by sharing a look, they quietly thank Laurent for assisting them in finding freedom. Later, the two, like Lincoln's dreams, are having fun on a boat. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.